Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Singing in the Rain is a 1952 musical romantic comedy that was directed and choreographed by Gene Kelly and Stanley Donan. It stars Kelly himself, Donald O'Connor, Debbie Reynolds, and it features Gene Hagen, Millard Mitchell, and Sid Charisse. The film is a history lesson of Hollywood in the late 1920s when silent pictures were giving way to the talkies. It's also a real valuable tutorial on how to be an awesome dancer, thanks to Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. They are just phenomenal in their roles. It's amazing to watch them nowadays. You just don't see that type of thing on film today. The movie wasn't adopted from a Broadway musical. Many of the musicals from that time were based on stage shows, but this one wasn't one of them. It was a new script that was written specifically for the movie, featuring old songs that were written for previous movies. After about 30 years after the film had become a beloved classic, it was basically reverse-engineered into a stage musical with its premiere in London's West End in 1983 and appearing on Broadway later on. One of the most shocking things to point out about the film is that Debbie Reynolds had no dance experience before she made the movie. Gene Kelly swore up and down that he could teach her how to dance, just as he had done with Frank Sinatra in Anchors Away. Miss Reynolds had been a gymnast so she wasn't completely unfamiliar with physical movement requiring grace and stamina. She buckled down and rehearsed day and night until she could share the dance floor with Kelly and O'Connor without embarrassing herself. To watch it nowadays, you would swear she was an experienced dancer when she did this role. At the time, she was really young, too, turning 19 during the shoot. She's made the statement before that the two hardest things that she ever did in her life was childbirth and making this movie. Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor had never worked together before. O'Connor was born into a vaudeville family in 1925. He had been on stage since he was an infant and in the movies since he was 12. He had about 36 film credits to his name, mostly musicals. Kelly was 13 years older than him, and he came to Hollywood a bit later than O'Connor did. He racked up about 18 films between 1942 and 1951. Then finally with this film, that's where their paths crossed. But that almost didn't happen. The producer of the film wanted Kelly's American in Paris co-star, Oscar Levant, for the role of Cosmo. But Kelly and the screenwriters wanted someone that could really dance. So O'Connor got the role, and he's fantastic for it. Gene Kelly choreographed almost everything in the film that had to do with dance. And he especially did the scenes with Sid Charisse. And it was done in a way that would hide the fact that she was taller than him. Her height was really accentuated because she wore high heels in the film. To keep that difference from being so obvious, Kelly arranged the routine so that they were never both standing upright when they were next to each other, always bending forward or away from one another instead. The last shot of the good morning sequence took about 40 takes to complete. It's the part where the three of them somersault over one couch and then tip another one over backwards before collapsing on it and laughing. Kelly was a demanding choreographer and director. And you'll notice that most of the dancing in the film is presented without a lot of editing. The camera moves around a lot, but it doesn't cut to other angles very often. And the dancers' bodies 
are usually completely visible. So when there are, say, three dancers who are supposed to be in complete unison, and one part of one's body does the wrong thing, you've got to do it over again. This entire shoot was difficult for that very reason. Debbie Reynolds said by the time that they had finished the 14-hour day of shooting this scene, her feet were completely bruised and bleeding. For the Make em Laugh number, Gene Kelly asked Donald O'Connor to revive a trick he had done as a young dancer, that being running up a wall and completing a somersault. That number was so physically taxing that O'Connor, who smoked four packs of cigarettes a day at the time, ended up in the hospital bed after its completion. He suffered from exhaustion and painful carpet burns. And the bad thing about it, he had to shoot the entire scene again because of a mistake with one of the cameras. So after a brief rest, he agreed to complete this difficult number all over again. O'Connor and Reynolds admitted that they didn't really enjoy working with Gene Kelly because they felt like he was verbally belittling and kind of a tyrant on set. But later on, Debbie Reynolds said that she did learn a lot from working with Gene Kelly because he was a perfectionist and a disciplinarian. She stated that he often would yell at her and make her cry. But she thinks back and realizes that it took a lot of patience for him to work with somebody who had never danced before. At one point during the filming, they found Debbie Reynolds curled up and crying, hidden in a corner. The first time they tried to film the singing in the rain sequence, they shot it in the late afternoon. Unfortunately, the homeowners in the area of the studio had come home from work and turned all their lawn sprinklers on because it was a hot day and they were trying to water their lawns. There wasn't enough pressure at the studio for the rain to work properly. They finally gave up trying and went ahead and filmed the sequence the next day, early enough so that everyone was at work and the water pressure was adequate for the shot. The other amazing thing about that scene was that studio technicians had to cover two outdoor city blocks on the back lot with tarps to make it look like it was dark because it was a nighttime scene. Ironically, with the way it was lit for decades, many people that saw the film thought that the number was actually shot inside. In a street set built inside of one of MGM's vast sound stages. Upon the movie's release, it was considered nothing more than an enjoyable MGM musical, one of the many that were released that same year. It received only two Academy Award nominations, none in a major category, and it lost both of them. It took a little bit of time for this grand film to grow on everybody, and now it's considered one of the best musicals ever made. In the very steamy vamp dance segment of the Broadway Melody Ballet with Sid Charisse and Gene Kelly, reviewers from both the Production Code and the Catholic Church's League of Decency objected to a brief, suggestive pose or movement between the two dancers. There's really no precise documentation on what was done, but it's pretty obvious if you look at the footage closely, toward the end of the dance, there's an abrupt cut when Charisse is wrapped around Kelly. This indicates the probable location of the area in question, and it probably was just something at the time that seemed way too suggestive to be on the screen. So it got cut out. You can definitely see a jump skip in the shoot. This wasn't the only thing that Sid Charisse had to deal with as far as censorship went. During the filming of the Crazy Veil section had to be stopped several times because they discovered that Sid Charisse's private parts were visible through her costume. Production had to be shut down for a while, wardrobe had to be brought in, and finally, when they got the problem fixed, the costume designer, Walter Plunkett, 
made this statement. Okay, guys, we finally got Sid's crotch licked, which caused everybody on the set to just crack up laughing. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big musical fan, but this movie is off the charts. It's amazing. It's definitely one that you can watch numerous times, and if you've never seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it. You'll be thoroughly pleased. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.